Hello all you whiskey lovers, this is Mark from WhiskeyWhistle.com with whiskey review number five. Today we have Glenfiddich Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, the 15 year old distillery edition. Uh, and uh, well, I hope you'll enjoy it. Um, anyway, Glenfiddich, I'm sure you've heard it before. Pretty much everyone has, whether they are uh, Scotch whiskey fans or not. Um, now, uh, Glenfiddich Distillery, why don't we talk a little bit about that. Uh, who is behind uh, Glenfiddich? This is uh, William Grant and Sons. And as the name suggests, William Grant uh, was the founder. And uh, uh, the uh, distillery began um, being built in 1886. Uh, and the first, uh, the first spirits flowed from the uh, distills in uh, 1887 on Christmas Day. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, hopefully they uh, uh, paid those still masters a little extra for working on Christmas Day. Um, so uh, uh, Glenfiddich, uh, as you can see on the bottle, there is a, a stag. Uh, what's the story behind that? Well, um, Glenfiddich, what does this mean? Uh, Glen means uh, valley. And uh, Fiddick, in fact, means deer, so Valley of the Deer, uh, hence the, uh, the stag on the bottle and uh, uh, all of the, um, uh, the uh, anything you see from Glen Fiddick. Uh, so uh, that's an interesting story. Uh, it's located in Speyside. I've got a little map here. Uh, so that's the map of Scotland. Uh, Highland is this uh, medium blue color. And Speyside is this uh, dark blue uh, little circle there. And I put a little star uh, where uh, the uh, Glenfiddich Distillery is in uh, Dufftown. Um, so, uh, interesting enough, um, it is classified as a Speyside uh, single malt whiskey. Uh, and that is because uh, it is in the vicinity of the River Spey. And uh, uh, the, uh, the River Fiddick. Uh, is, uh, I believe, a tributa tribu tributary uh, of uh, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the River Spade. So that's how, uh, that's how it got its name, and uh, that's the region it's from. Um, so uh, William Grant and Sons, they are in their, uh, their fifth generation. Um, so long, long family history there. Um, now, uh, currently, uh, they have a, a quite a young man uh, managing the uh, uh, the blending uh, that occurs in William Grant and Sons. Uh, his name is Brian Kinsman, and as you guessed, uh, that's the fellow in the photo that you see there, uh, holding a bottle of 30-year-old Glenfiddich, which I wish I could get. Um, <clears throat> uh, anyway, so he's the master blender. Uh, so he, um, what his job is, is to take all of the different casks and blend them together uh, to create the right expression with the right flavors uh, and uh, to use those casks uh, when they have uh, matured uh, fully uh, in his mind. Uh, so, um, uh, fantastic job. Um, apparently he has a, a chemistry background and, uh, well, um, let me tell you, if this bottle is any indication, uh, he's done a great job. Uh, anyway, so William Grant & Sons, a uh, very large company. Uh, they have quite a few uh, distilleries um, in Scotland and also um, uh, one famous uh, uh, brand of blended single, uh, sorry, blended Scotch whiskey. Uh, so uh, the Balvenie uh, is uh, uh, the Balvenie distillery. That's um, uh, one of William Grant's uh, creations. Uh, and uh, Grant's Blended Scotch Whiskey, which is uh, globally number three. Uh, Kinnanby, which is a, a distillery shrouded in mystery. Uh, apparently there's a 23-year-old that's been released uh, last year or early this year. Uh, Jervan Grain Distillery. Grain Distillery, they don't, they don't uh, distill uh, single malt, which is made from barley malt. Uh, they would distill other grains, be it uh, unmalted barley or corn or wheat. And uh, uh, a very new distillery also called Isla Bay Distillery, which apparently opened in 2007. 
So about eight years old, I'm guessing we'll see probably uh, their first release in the next uh, two to four years uh, with either a 10 or 12 year old. Uh, so anyway, very uh, prolific uh, company and it's nice that they're family owned, isn't it? Um, uh, anyway, now uh, Glenfiddich, uh, they're also known for their triangular bottle. I'll let you have a look at that one. Uh, so you can see the shape of it there. Uh, it's become less triangular uh, than in the past and I think that's just because the bottle becomes stronger without those points, doesn't it? Um, and uh, uh, anyway, um, let me just read the uh, the label here for you. Glenfiddich Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, distilled and matured in the Valley of the Deer, where the distillery has stood since 1887. 15 years old, distillery edition, non-chill filtered, 51% alcohol by volume. This exceptional whiskey has matured in American and European oak at the Glenfiddich Distillery for 15 years. William Grant & Sons, product of Scotland, 51% uh, volume, 1 liter. Now you'll notice that in big white letters there, non-chill filtered. Uh, so we'll talk more about that once we uh, start uh, smelling and tasting the whiskey. Um, and what about the, uh, 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 the presentation can? Uh, well, uh, beautiful scenery there, nice uh, stormy day at uh, the distillery. And um, uh, nothing new on the front, but let's look at the back here. Uh, I'll just read, it, read the information about this particular uh, whiskey. This Glenfiddich 15-year-old distillery edition has been matured in American and European oak including traditional Oloroso sherry casks. Non-chill filtered, it is married with other whiskies of at least the same age on site in Dufftown to create a truly exceptional single malt with concentrated floral flavors and intense lingering spicy pepper aromas. And uh, we also see that it's the world's most awarded single malt scotch whiskey. Uh, Okay, so a uh, little more about the distillery. I mentioned five generations. Uh, they have 28 stills. Uh, it's a very large number. Apparently they're smaller than, uh, than average um, and perhaps a little bit shorter. So it's a bit richer um, uh, a spirit than uh, the taller stills. Uh, globally, they are uh, the number one single malt Scotch whiskey brand with either a 17% market share, uh, which I believe is by dollar value, or as high as a 30% uh, share of uh, uh, bottles sold by volume. Uh, so uh, either way you look at it, uh, this is the uh, outstanding leader. And apparently they sell more than the second and third uh, single malt whiskey brands uh, combined. How about that? Uh, okay, so uh, also known as the Trailblazer um, in the 60s, uh, this, was, uh, this was the single malt that kind of uh, got the ball rolling uh, for this particular uh, category. Uh, so much is to be uh, owed to this particular distillery. Um, okay, well let's get on to uh, the uh, matters at hand and uh, we'll smell and taste this amazing whiskey. Great sound uncorking that one. Um, I'm not going to pour very much. This is my third try at getting this filmed. There we go. Yeah, that's about 20 to 25 uh, milliliters. And uh, cork that back on. Now color-wise, this is basically standard amber. I don't think they've used much color though, given that they've got some sherry casks and according to my nose, some first fill bourbon casks. So the bourbon cask has been emptied, the cask has been shipped to Scotland, Glenfiddich has put their spirit in there, and that's known as the first fill. Uh, they, uh, companies may use up to five, six, seven fills or more. Uh, and uh, each fill uh, 
obviously has a little bit less wood involvement. And uh, one thing you'll notice when you um, when you stroll that around the glass, uh, you'll notice some very strong legs appearing or tiers. And uh, additionally, at the top level uh, of the tiering, you'll notice some beading going on. And what that tells you is that um, uh, it's got a, quite a lot of viscosity, part and parcel because of, of the fact that it's non-chill filtered. So they have not taken the whiskey down to 4 degrees or 0 or minus 4 and pushed it through a filter to remove the uh, fatty acids uh, or proteins that uh, naturally exist uh, in whiskey. Uh, so that's good news. Natural is better, I think, wouldn't you say? Um, anyway, so let's um, uh, let's smell this. And what I noticed at first, of course, there's a bit of an alcohol rush given it's 51%, but a lot of floral oaky notes going on, uh, floral wood notes, and not just oak. But I'm smelling sandalwood and uh, cedar. Um, beautiful smells, aren't they? A little bit of apple and um, and some um, golden raisins, uh, the Thompson seedless that my grandma used to bake uh, when I was young. Yeah, beautiful nose. Uh, what they're calling floral, I believe, is this uh, very um, uh, complex uh, uh, wood wood note. Um, and uh, with a bit of time, uh, I've got my notes here. Uh, with a bit of time, I notice some slightly salty uh, butterscotch uh, coming in. It takes about five or ten minutes, so it's not quite there yet, but. Anyway, interesting. And um, uh, well, let's uh, let's check out the flavors. Let's taste it. Big oaky notes. Also, it's very sweet. Uh, I'm finding it a citrus uh, sweetness. Uh, like a tangerine, something sweet, not so sour, uh, some vanilla sugar, and a slightly bitter note, some astringency, which I would liken to um, uh, orange seeds, if you happen to bite into one uh, by accident when you're eating your orange. Um, you know, mixed together with the orange, it's not, not a, it's actually quite a nice flavor. And um, uh, finish, um, I find it very dry, quite dry uh, and um, you still get the orange there's some malt graininess coming through given that it's of course uh, made with uh, barley malt uh, vanilla and the dryness carries quite a long time and uh, finally you're gonna get a bit of a minty a herbal minty note and you know when you when you uh, when you have a mint and you finish it and you breathe in you get that kind of cooling sensation, and I'm finding that with this uh, with this whiskey. Um, anyway, so uh, quite lovely. Now, 51 percent. Um, it really does uh, do well with water, so uh, you can drink it neat. It is nice and smooth, uh, but I would recommend uh, putting in uh, at least a little bit of water in there. And uh, let's see how that changes things. I'm noticing also with thyme and a bit of water, uh, some leather notes coming through, like an oiled leather. And uh, this is something you generally find with older whiskeys. 15 years old is not that old. Uh, it's on the young side. However, um, they may have put in something a little bit older to give it that uh, little bit of an aged um, quality note. And interestingly also some, uh, some tobacco, um, a nice Cuban cigar. Uh, the wood decreases and uh, you get a bit of a brown sugar or a slightly rum-like note uh, coming through with water. And um, with water, let's taste it. Mm. 
Mm. Becomes more velvety with water, which is interesting. And I think that's because of the reactions with the um, uh, the fatty acids and the proteins uh, as you bring the um, uh, ABV down. Um, and uh, it becomes a little more fruity. And I'm, I'm tasting um, a musk melon and uh, a slightly underripe banana uh, coming through there uh, with water. Um, quite lovely. And in the finish with water, a little bit of nuttiness. Still very dry. And you still get that wonderful minty, herbal minty note coming through. Um, now, with the, uh, when you add water, one thing that you'll notice, and you should not be alarmed, um, that's the original glass I poured. This is one I poured quite a bit earlier. What's the difference? What do you see? Can you see that, uh, that um, sort of uh, dustiness? This is known as scotch mist. And uh, don't be alarmed. That's really, this is how whiskey should look uh, with a bit of water added. And it's kind of like an opal or um, a mother of pearl effect. It's not condensation on the glass. Uh, again, that's the original one, crystal clear. And over time, uh, you end up with this uh, scotch mist. And uh, it's just beautiful, isn't it? Anyway. It really smoothens up with water. It fruitens up, and that dryness uh, is still there with the oranges and a bit of mint, uh, herbal mint effect going on. Uh, I recommend you try that. Uh, great value, I would say. Um, anyway, so uh, for Marks, I'm going to give this 90 out of 100. I find this to be um, probably one of the finest Glenfiddich I have tasted. I have tried the 18 and the 21. Uh, they are good, and I think they would be even better if they uh, uh, provided a more natural presentation for those too. Hopefully we'll see that soon. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks everyone. Thanks for coming and watching with me. This is Mark from WhiskeyWhistle.com. You can find me on Facebook, on Twitter, and for the Koreans watching, uh, I've also got a neighbor blog that's up and running. Uh, just type in Whiskey Whistle, W-H-I-S-K-Y, W-H-I-S-T-L-E, Whiskey Whistle, with no E on the whiskey. Okay, uh, we'll see you next time, and have a great weekend.